I'm Christina with The Turned Leg. I love to salvage, repurpose and create and help others to do the same. And I'm also a booth owner. I've had a booth at an antique mall since 2015. And when I first started out, I was a full-time science teacher. I really had no clue what I'm doing. Over the years, I've met some amazing people and I've learned a lot of things. So I have created a playlist here on YouTube sharing what I've learned. Recently, I tackled my salvage area. I love to save old stuff, even if I can only save parts. And I love to find projects to use those parts for. And I figured other people might want to do the same. But my salvage area was getting out of control. So it was time to give it an overhaul, get things more organized, and help my customers find things a little bit better. I have salvage in a couple of areas. I have one spot over to the right there. I have salvage parts and legs. And then I have another area where I have salvage windows and cabinet doors and a few larger pieces from furniture. And I just keep finding good salvage. So now all of my salvage areas are a bit out of control. I thought it would be a good idea to consolidate all of my salvage into one area and try to reorganize things. Everything I just did, popping in those windows where I did, I just did so that I could quickly set up my new decoupage area. My decoupage area was originally housed in the center of my booth, and it was kind of off to the side. I thought it would be better located right next to my stencils. All of the products are also made by JRV, Jamie Ray Vintage, so I thought it was a good idea to put them next to each other. The displays for the decoupage paper were fairly simple. All I did was take curtain rods and use shower curtain hooks to hang the paper. But I knew that I would actually have to then move the windows entirely because that was not their final location. Sometimes when you have a booth, you have to do what you need to do to kind of keep things looking nice and pretty so your shoppers can still shop, but still making progress towards your larger projects. So it was not ideal but I'm usually working in my booth while the mall is open. So I try to do booth overhauls in little chunks whenever possible. And sometimes that gives me a little bit more work, which you'll see here. So the first thing we're gonna do is take all those windows I put in that area out because that's not where they're staying. I put all of the windows on a cart that you can borrow at the antique mall to move furniture just for a little bit. I figured this was a secure spot for them while shoppers were in the mall and it would be easy for me to move them wherever I needed to go. Cleanup of the area continued and we also removed that large bookcase. Next job was to tackle the legs. The plan was to move the legs to the left hand side closer to the milk paint display. That would allow the windows to be located on the right hand side and they could rest up against a more sturdy wall. It was also the perfect time to reorganize all of the salvage. The leg display is made using a whole bunch of crates. Once that was in position, it was now time to organize the rest of the salvage. I had the perfect piece that I was using in another part in my booth that I was gonna bring in just for salvage. The cubbies worked out perfect to sort all the salvage. Now that the legs and salvage were in place, I needed to add back in the windows. To inspire others in my booth, I have an old salvage window 
with lots of good ideas on how other people could use windows. I've also made a video on things you can do with salvage windows that I will pop here if you're interested in checking it out. To hang the window on the wall, I prefer using a French cleat, which I attached to the wall and another part was attached to my window. To help secure the salvage window display, I moved the pipes that I had from the other display into the new display. I put two of these, one at the top of where the windows are and one near the bottom, so that it would help make the windows more stable. This project was complete enough for today, and now I had to turn my attention to another area in my booth. My two DIY paint displays back up to one another and form an L, so the area behind them can actually be used for display. When I created the space, I used what I had, and it's kind of a hodgepodge. Those two bookcases there sit a little further out, so nothing can go flush against that wall, which is a bit of a problem. I wanted to see what I could do to level out that back wall and also make things look a little bit better. I removed the doors and the bookcases first to kind of see what I had. The next step was to remove all of the paneling and the fencing. To build a wall, I knew I needed more wood, and wood prices are at a premium, so instead of reusing the bookcases in another area of my booth, I decided to use those bookcases as the base structure for my back wall. I brought in a bunch of scrap wood and my compound miter saw, my nail gun, and my drill. And to cover the wall, I had a bunch of salvaged paneling that I had found curbside that would do the job. The paneling went up fairly easily using my nail gun, but I did not have enough to finish the project. The last thing I wanted to do was to put up these ladders. I had cut one long ladder into two parts. One of the sections I put up along the shorter wall just to make the walls similar height and then I attached another ladder across them. This ladder would allow me to hang things down including lights into this space. If you've had a booth for a while, you know it's never done. For the new year, I think it's really important to change things up. Since I have such a large space over 1300 square feet, I sometimes even like to change the traffic flow just so people go, oh, that's new. So I am far from done. I have the salvage area, that's pretty much complete. I might address the shelving in the areas above a little bit more. And by combining my salvage all into one area, I was able to move my JRV decoupage paper display right next to the JRV stencil display, which I think makes a lot more sense for my customers. The other area that I put the new wood boards on, obviously the bottom is not complete. What I want right now is costing too much money, so I'm going to kind of wait a little bit. I had some great advice from a fellow booth owner that said, Christina, they're not even going to see it. Once you fill the area with your items, they're not going to see the lower part. Don't stress on it. Finish it when you can get to it. And pretty much that's what I've been trying to do more of. So I was like, okay, I will. I'll take her advice. But I have some other big projects coming. I'm going to be moving that big structure that I created uh, with the doors and the ladder. If you didn't see me build it, I'll put a link to the video above. And we're pretty much just moving the whole flow of traffic a little bit in my booth to add interest, to get more customers to shop, and to make things look prettier. I hope this video has inspired you. Thank you so much for watching. Now get out there, salvage, repurpose, and create. Mm -hmm.